Prime Minister, thank you again for a great opportunity to be in your office. Um, we would like an update from you. You were recently in New York and Washington. Uh, I think you visited the UN and uh, also the, the Secretary of State, uh, the Department of State. Um, what was the real purpose of the visit and did you accomplish everything you set out to do? Now, the main purpose was to attend the General Assembly in uh, New York of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. We went with a large delegation from, you know, from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The uh, leader of the delegation, of course, was our king, uh, yeah, Willem Alexander. Uh, but uh, we were there with the four prime ministers, which is the first time that four prime ministers of the Kingdom were together, at least during the period that I'm uh, prime minister. Mm -hmm. The main objective was to participate in the General Assembly. Uh, but some of the topics we covered, very important, uh, climate change, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, leaded off by a youth summit with youth leaders, mm -hmm. talking about the importance for us to conserve and preserve our biodiversity in the next generations. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also impacts, of course, uh, our islands. Here in the Caribbean, we know that the storms are becoming more frequent and more intense. Uh, and therefore, one of the topics that I was glad to see on the agenda, prominently as well, mm -hmm. is uh, yeah, the challenges and vulnerabilities of the small island development states, of which Curacao is one. Mm -hmm. So we talked about uh, how to finance the gaps, uh, enabling the islands to attain the sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. uh, but also how to make the islands more resilient. So there were different uh, events on those teams, uh, also outside uh, the UN United Nations venue. Uh, there was, for example, we attended uh, a luncheon with uh, President Bill Clinton and the Clinton Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for Caribbean islands. Uh, and therefore, I can look back uh, with satisfaction of the topics that were covered and reference, uh, relevance for uh, Curacao, uh, which compared to two years ago, uh, I can see more, let's say, space being dedicated to, to small islands, development states, climate change, poverty, uh, and our ability to achieve uh, our commitment with the uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And, uh, I had the honor to co moderate a session on the Samoa Pathway Review, mm -hmm. uh, which ended up with signing of a renewed declaration for SIDS to achieve these uh, goals. So uh, I can look back with satisfaction and I combine it with the trip to Washington uh, to revisit some of the conversations that I had back in May together with the Prime Minister of the Your trip to, to Washington had uh, a little bit to do also with the refinery here? It has a lot to do with the refinery. Uh, in fact, uh, just before I went to New York, uh, RDK, uh, we submitted uh, a new petition for a specific license to OFAC. Uh, that is still in view of uh, the negotiations that are ongoing with the new partner mm -hmm. and the unwinding of the uh, contract, the lease contract with the PDVSA, which is still the end of the year, December 21st, uh, 2019. But what we realized in conversations, uh, including stakeholders like the uh, labor unions, um, we saw a need to ask for an additional petition which allows uh, PDVSA or the local subsidiary, ISLA, mm -hmm. to comply uh, with creditors which include uh, the workers, mm -hmm. uh, potentially the salaries but also salaries paid, uh, the government taxes uh, but also uh, debts uh, owed to CIU, uh, RDK and other government owned companies. And what we saw is that the current sanctions uh, impede uh, Isla to make financial uh, transactions mm -hmm. using, for example, US banks to make dollar payments. Uh, and so we asked for a petition so that by the end of the year, or until the end of the year, they are able to comply uh, to these local stakeholders. So I had the opportunity to give additional background on that, give an update how uh, the negotiations uh, with the cash group is going. Okay. Um, we have uh, this week a coming mission from the cash delegation to do their due diligence mm -hmm. and potentially uh, Mr. Cash will also visit the island again. Uh, so these are going, uh, let's say, as planned. Uh, and 
in that context, uh, I think that uh, it was worthwhile that I was able to give an update personally as Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, all fact that also the Treasury Department value that we kept them abreast of the development so that they can uh, anticipate how they can help us because they reiterated that it is not the intention of the US government uh, for our local community in the islands uh, to be impacted negatively by the sanctions uh, that are here towards uh, Venezuela and uh, let's say the Maduro regime. So you think we will get this exoneration? Well, they uh, responded positively. Uh, what they're looking at technically, how they can comply with our petition. Uh, basically, in this jacket, as we say, in the uh, they can put it so uh, that uh, the, the, yeah, the accelerations that uh, we requested uh, allows PDVSA's subsidiary here on Curacao to comply with their local uh, financial obligations. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, without these funds uh, benefiting Pedevesa uh, or the government of Venezuela. So, in between there, they have to find a formula uh, which can help us, uh, in any case, create that additional space that we request.